pizza is the world's favorite food. I'm a pizza man, so you can imagine I eat a lot of pizza. Mm. This is the best breakfast I've had all week. <laughs> but there are still so many styles I don't know about in so many cities that I haven't been to. Is this too much to ask from a New Yorker to eat it with a knife and fork? Pizza toast. Salud. You could really find great pizza all over the world. Seoul, Korea, making pizza with Mr. Pizza. Who the hell would have thought? While eating great pizza is definitely a perk, it's the people that make a great pizzeria. He's been eating too much pizza, he's starting to slouch. I'm content, I found my niche. Seems like the American dream to me. Or American nightmare, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's all perspective. Honestly, there's so many great pizza cities in the world that I haven't been to, but first I'm starting in my backyard, Brooklyn. When you think about a neighborhood pizzeria, you think about grabbing a slice on your way home from work, after school, in and out. The kind of place that's so ingrained in the community, it feels like it's been there for 100 years. Then there's Roberta's, a pizzeria that just isn't part of the neighborhood. It literally created one. Where it all began, man, huh? Yeah, this is it, right here. Being in the section, looking at the wood fire ovens, it's something really relaxing about looking at the flame. It's like awesome, like really in the true sense of the word. It's like awe-inspiring to cook with fire. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like the light of the sun <laughs> that was stored by the wood, and then it's released through like chemical reactions. It's super <laughs> rad. I remember when Roberta's first opened, I came here and we walked into Roberta's and from the outside, you know, you, you can't really tell what's inside. That looks like a And then you walk inside and it's just this like wonderful place. Yeah, I mean, this was all just like a wrecked car lot. Like there's this guy, Ashat. This was his mechanic shop. And then when we took it over, the cars came out and we just put a bunch of dirt down there. Started throwing parties in the beginning because we were all bartenders from before. And that's how we, you know, attract business is by throwing a party. And there wasn't really anybody in Roberta's in the early days, you know, it was right. pretty slow. Right. Just to see what's happened around the neighborhood, it's, it's been really wild. And this restaurant is iconic in my opinion because it came here and it changed the neighborhood. Like people moved to Bushwick and moved to this neighborhood specifically because Roberta's was yeah, here. Yeah, like the real estate agents love to say like, it's right around the corner from Roberta. There was no master plan of like, first we're gonna take over this building, then we're gonna move, and then everyone's gonna move to the neighborhood and it's gonna be That's like the next big here. thing. I mean, we were like boiling water in the wood oven. It's like controlled chaos at best and... <laughs> All right, we gotta go check this out, see what's going on out here. Oh, that's Yankel. Yeah. He's our uh, wood delivery guy. Yankel! Walk out, can you go in front? It took over there, but it's very over an hour. So what do you want to do now? I know, I gotta get the delivery. I know, let's do the delivery. So, I can't find it. But can you go in front of their gate? Yankel, man. I gotta get this guy's number. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll hook you up with Yankel. I do love my wood guys, though. You know, it's important to have a good wood guy. It's a key ingredient, right? Just like the water or yeah. the flour or the dough. Yeah. I mean, we had the same wood guy forever, and it would come in big blocks, and we would chop it ourselves. Yeah. Like, this guy's like, boom. He's, as yeah. you can see, he's a professional. In and out. It's nice, though. It's cut nice. Dude, yeah. Double, triple cut. Yeah, we don't have to do to it. We just use it straight up like that. Oh. How long have you been uh, delivering wood for, Yankel? Wood? For about 20 years. 20 years? So you know the business well, huh? He's the best. Let's make some pizza. Yeah, let's go make some pizza. When I think about Roberta's, one of the pizzas that comes to mind, of course, is the Millennium Falco. And that was like the second pizza that I got on the menu. I mean, and the story goes back to my Sicilian grandmother and the pizza that she used to make. And breadcrumbs are like a crucial part of Sicilian cuisine. Since we're making the Falco, we're gonna do like a ladle and a little more than a half ladle because there's no mozzarella on this pizza. So you're not gonna have the moisture from the mozzarella, so you, you, you put a little more. extra sauce so the pizza doesn't dry out. Yeah, exactly. So now the breadcrumbs, I'm just gonna kind of get in there into the saucy areas. Mm -hmm. and do you remember the first time that you made this pie? Uh, I rem no, I don't remember much from the early days. I was <laughs> a lot of drugs and drinking, and it just kind of happened out of the ether. But I mean, look at the beautiful leoparding on the side of these pizzas, I think is what Roberta is, is sort of known for. Like, so the Falco is what, what it's all about, is this middle action here. It's not sauce, it's not breadcrumbs, it's, it's like great. everything all come together. Right, it smells delicious. And a little more barm on the finish. The sausage is so good, the breadcrumbs, a little bit of heat from the pepper. I mean, it has all the things you want pizza to have. 
pizza sets the table, and then everyone else is welcome to come and bring their part into it. Roberta is not like a little cathedral to pizza where there's one person doing their thing and you enter that place. I love to see people like Mark Iacono doing his thing. I got to take a pilgrimage to Defaras, but we're out there trying to blaze new territory. Cheers. Cheers, bro. Yeah, man. Thanks for thanks for coming out.